all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so it's not that the paxlovid has failed on all fronts it still is useful at least from the statistics or the data point of view for at risk patients and severe outcomes however it has failed for prophylaxis for protection of someone who does not have covid just got exposed to it and now they started them on paxlovid so that it can help prevent the covid and that is where it has failed so let's start our discussion so this is drbean.com in the description there is a link to drbean.com and the price for those 1000 videos premium account is not even a couple of lunches so with that here is the first trial for paxlovid this is the trial for based based on which they got the eua and i would explain that this is just a reference here this is that trials report in new england journal of medicine this is the uh, some more data on this one here is the eua or emergency use authorization all these links are in the description then this is the latest so if you see here april 29 2022 this is pfizer site where they kind of said it this way they said in their latest trial for protection or prophylaxis in this trial compared to placebo pfizer observed risk reduction of 32% and 37% in adults who received paxlovid for 5 and 10 days respectively to prevent infection these results however were not statistically significant and as such the primary endpoint of re- of reducing the risk of confirmed and symptomatic covid-19 infection in adults who had been exposed to the virus through a household co- contact was not met so that is the basic message this is it if you just wanted to quit now you can but i would explain a little more then there is this as well paxlovid mouth so i think those who have taken paxlovid they know that it causes quite a bad taste in the mouth, mouth as well then this was very interesting as well that there is a uh, anecdotal set of reports that and this was in the trial data as well that paxlovid once it is taken it helps control the viral load but once the therapy is stopped there is a rebounds of the viral load and when this was discussed with the paxlovid ceo or pfizer ceo he said they should take one more course and <laughs> fda rebukes pfizer ceo's suggestion to take more paxlovid if covid-19 symptoms return and who is the ceo prescribing medicines we doctors cannot talk about it people take their pitchforks and start running after us and here is a ceo talking about take more medicine and that's okay this is cnn talking about the viral rebound after the paxlovid and here is a eua document where the rebound is also discussed so these are the references let's start so today i drew a visual summary does this summary actually this should be actually sufficient if i did a good job this is a visual summary so what happens is here is a patient who has covid this is a household member of the patient who we are trying to protect from becoming symptomatic or we are trying to give them a prophylaxis the prophylaxis given was paxlovid but paxlovid failed and covid actually infected the patient's contact that's a summary um so these are our gifts of humanity that continuing so now three main topics today what is paxlovid good for what it is not good for or and what is kind of still in the air so this is the good bad and the ugly of the paxlovid so where is it good for 
the EUA for the Paxlovid, for those patients, this was the first trial about Paxlovid that allowed FDA to give the EUA. That was this, 12 years and above patients who are at least 40 kilogram and above and who are at risk of severe COVID, including dying. For example, they have comorbidities, they're immunosuppressed, or they have diabetes, they have renal failures and so on. If there are any such risks in these patients, the first trial of Paxlovid had actually shown statistically significant results of improvement or protection. For example, all the deaths that occurred were in the placebo group and in the Paxlovid group, there were no deaths. Secondly, keep this in mind, the rival of the Paxlovid, molnupiravir. Molnupiravir's efficacy against death is only 30% reduction. So that's not a very efficacious drug compared to Paxlovid. So that means, what is the good of the Paxlovid? Paxlovid is good for at-risk patients who might become severe. That's it. Now, the second topic today is the rebound. So we know that there are many reports, and even in the trial for Paxlovid, there is a report of rebound. That is, let's say the trial or the therapy is for five days. When the therapy is finished, after that, the SARS-CoV-2 load in patients starts rising again. So that is a rebound. When they discussed that with, the, with Pfizer, Pfizer simply said, we saw a similar rebound in placebo as well. That is why we are not worried about it and we are confident for the efficacy of Paxlovid. Now, I have become quite um, used to seeing the drug companies dismissing various serious things by simply saying, we saw that in the placebo as well. They did this with the clotting too. And now they're stopping Johnson & Johnson. Previously, they were saying that the, the incidence was balanced between placebo and non-placebo or the intervention. Here, once again, the uh, Pfizer company said it's equal. So I'm sure that in a, in a few weeks or months, they would find out it is not equal and then there would have to be some further uh, considerations. When the FDA, uh, sorry, Pfizer's CEO was asked this question that there are uh, rebounds, he simply said they should take one more course of five days to which uh, FDA came back and said, it is not approved, it is not authorized to be done that way. So this is not, this is not, this is incorrect. So that is two news. And now the, the final one that I wanted to discuss, and that is Paxlovid has failed as a prophylactic for household contacts of confirmed COVID-19 patients. So the same visual here, but now let's look at the details. This is the trial, this detail that I'm going to show you. This is a trial for the first trial that allowed or that got Paxlovid the, the EUA. So that was a phase two or three. It was a double blind RCT where there were 2,246 persons, patients. They were all symptomatic. They were unvaccinated. They were non-hospitalized but they were at high risk of progressing to severe COVID, including possibility of dying. So these were the patients. They were divided into two groups. One group was 1120, about 1100. The other one was 1126. 1120 patients were given 300 milligram Nirma Trelvir, and I have done the Paxlovid discussion separately. 
nirmatralvir and 100 mg of ritonavir they both are antivirals nirmatralvir is the protease inhibitor again i've done that discussion in detail this group was given paxlovid for 5 days and it was given every 12 hours placebo had placebo and what were the results they did two analyses on this group one was in terim and one was final of course the in terim analysis showed that in the intervention group where the folks who were taking paxlovid the severe cases were 3 out of 389 so you could say that hey they were actually 1100 but remember this is an in terim result that is they took some people's data whoever was available by that time so three cases of severe cases and then on the placebo side was 27 cases out of 385 so paxlovid side had 0.77% severity incidence and the placebo had 7.7 so that's a good outcome then on the paxlovid side there were zero deaths and on the placebo side there were seven deaths then they did the final analysis that is when all the data became available then the relative risk reduction was about 89% more importantly for me there were 13 deaths and all those were in placebo paxlovid group did not have any death in it so what is the takeaway from this trial this trial says somebody who is at risk of becoming severe for them paxlovid is useful now the failed trial this trial was so let's say here is a patient and the patient has sars-cov-2 they took household contacts and there was a specific condition household contact had to be those for example let's say i use my household as an example somebody becomes covid positive confirmed then within 96 hours i could become part of the paxlovid trial now what are the conditions for me if i am a contact with the with the patient number 1 it's within 96 hours number 2 i have to be asymptomatic number 3 i have to be rt pcr negative or pcr negative that is covid negative so this was a criteria 2957 almost 3000 adults fulfilled this criteria and participated they had three groups in this and these adults were separated one to one in three groups one group received 5 days paxlovid and then 5 days placebo so total of 10 days everyone got but one group had 5 days therapy and to continue them for 10 days they gave them placebo for the remaining 5 days another group got paxlovid for 10 days and then another group got placebo for 10 days this was the setup and again this is a test for prophylaxis so what they saw was there was a lowering of the risk 32% in the 5 day therapy 37% in the 10 day therapy but the data was not statistically significant that means this was this just occurred by chance so it failed so with this so today's talk is done now i wanted to share some side effects and contraindications as we are discussing this so if i go in here in here so adverse events that discontinued the study this is not this study the one that just failed but this is the previous ones So a total of 45 subjects discontinued the study due to adverse events in the interim analysis and the I want to actually here so nausea vomiting were 
couple of reasons. Then creatinine in renal clearance decreased. So that is a stress on the kidney. Then also including GFR abnormality. So glomerular filtration rate, that is, the, that is a marker for or a measure for kidney's function. Then similar numbers of overall adverse events leading to discontinuation were observed in the top line safety results as well. So that is one common adverse events. A total of 133 recipients had the adverse event. So let's look at them over here. Dysgousia. So that is the bad taste in mouth. And that you, you, you can see there are so many news about that as well. That is called now Paxlovid mouth as well or Pax, Paxlovid taste. So dysgousia was present, diarrhea, nausea, headache, vomiting, pyrexia, and COVID-19 pneumonia. Liver enzyme changes, COVID-19 itself, D-dimer increase, that is some clotting, and pneumonia. These were the adverse events that were seen. So if I now go to the contraindications, so allergies, hypersensitivity reactions, that is one, hepatotoxicity, so total of 20 subjects had adverse events related to hepatotoxicity or liver issues. And then pancreatitis occurred, that actually scares me more than other things. Uh, then the PR interval, so heart, uh, EKG issues, total cholesterol and triglycerides elevation. So that is another new onset or exacerbation of diabetes mellitus or hyperglycemia. Redistribution and accumulation of body fats. So we all have a um, pattern of where the fats go in our body. But some drugs can actually, and some hormonal abnormalities as well, can free up the fats from one place and deposit them somewhere else. Spontaneous bleeding in patients with hemophilia. The point is, you must have heard for other drugs where there were lots of energy spent to say that, hey, this drug is really bad and it has adverse reactions and adverse effects. And because of that, it should not be used and so on. And here we are talking about Paxlovid, which is actually at least from one trial and one indication for severe at-risk patients, it's a good drug. And here you saw the list of issues. And it has failed in another area as well. Anyways, the company's response to that was, we are very confident that the drug, let me actually show you. And that is the last part and then we stop. So Pfizer then said, here, while we are disappointed in the outcome of this particular study, these results do not impact the strong efficacy and safety data we have observed in our earlier trial for the treatment of COVID-19 patients at high risk of developing severe illness. And we are pleased to see the growing global use of Paxlovid in that population. So they're saying that here we are happy that drug continues to be sold more. <laughs> Skyfrog says, can I order placebo from India? Sure. So that is the talk. Thank you very much. So what I'll do is we will go to Cool Beans Cafe live in a few minutes and we'll do chit chat and even review some more parts of this, uh, uh, this particular talk today. I have, today is the first time I wrote the cliff notes for this lecture and posted them on Substack. So now I'll take this video's link and put that over there as well. So with this, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share and support this work. Easiest way where you get a lot of benefit back is if you buy it on drbean.com. The price is really low. You would actually be surprised. The link is in the description and you get access to about 1000 videos. The price is so low that even one video, one lecture, should have been higher <laughs> for more price. So there are a thousand. So that is one good way to support this work. Otherwise, there are also link in the, the description. You can buy me a coffee 
or you can become Substack member or Patreon, patron, or you can even use PayPal. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the cafe in a few minutes.